Good afternoon, Pastor David. Yep. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. On Tuesday, and I don't know for those on social media were able to watch it, but we got some good responses on uh, as we're looking at a series in Marriage of the Family, as you'll be coming up with that in a couple of weeks on our Wednesday Study Three Ephesians. And we teased out a little bit on Tuesday wives submitting to the husbands and I think we just got up and walked away because that's all that needed to be said yeah that's it <laughs> uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about that pastor uh, is how is it possible for I mean because you think about wives submitting or anybody submitting it, it's just a, a tough under it's a tough thing to understand what does that look like so how is it possible pastor for a wife to submit to their husband. Well, you know what? Uh, the verses that lead to the command for wives to submit to the husband, the verses that precede that speak about uh, being filled with the Spirit. The way that submission of a man to God, of the woman to her husband and God, even within the confines of the church where there's the mutual submission of membership one with another, um, it all begins with the filling of the Holy Spirit. When, when a person asks the Lord to, to fill them, that, that they might be filled with His presence, and when the reality of the power of the Spirit begins to manifest itself in that person's personal life, then he's going to learn to do the things that Jesus taught him to do, and he is going to do those things, and so will his wife. So... In my relationship with Marie, we've been together for a while, and <laughs> excuse me, she's only known me as a Bible teacher. She knows all about me. I mean, I'm not saying I'm some perfect man that she knows, but she only knows me as somebody that that introduced her through the Bible to God. And so I have a built-in relationship with her already where she has respected me as, uh, as a man who loves the Lord. And so when a woman has a husband who actually does wash her with the water of the word, where he, he actually loves in a sacrificial fashion, John, when he, when, he, when he helps her to know her value, that she's not just somebody that he comes home to, but that she's, she's got an honor and, and, and a, a value that he cherishes. When she knows that, then, then it helps her to have a sense of, of who she is, and it also helps her to, uh, to live as one who, who is in love with that man who is so in love with her. And all of that is empowered by the Word of God, which gives to us commands in terms of how to get along with one another, how to resolve conflicts with one another, how to have a vision for a life with one another, and all of those things are contained in God's Word. So when you have the Word and you have the power of the Spirit and you have the love of God between you and the love a husband has for a wife and the love a, a wife has for the husband, then submission isn't that big a deal. My, my wife, Marie, is, is extremely submitted to me, but it's not because I'm such a wonderful person. It's because she's filled with the Spirit and it's because she loves the Lord and and it's because she desires to please him. And she has all of these wonderful qualities of the fruit of the Spirit and, and all in her life. And these things all work together. And so I, as, as a man who wants to walk in the Spirit and to love my wife with the love of Christ and to lay down my life for her as I do every day, well, the, I, I've said it like this. When you love your wife 100%, she loves you back 150 mm -hmm. And it comes by the Holy Spirit. It comes through her desire to please God. And in her desire to please God, she wants to be the woman that God wants her to be. She reads her scriptures. She does her devotions. She listens to the Bible studies. We talk about the Lord together all the time. That's really the majority of our conversation is how we can live together and please the Lord. That really, John, is much of our conversation, a huge amount of it is what is the Lord doing in our lives, in the church, in the lives of our children, our grandchildren, our friends? How can we, how can we be better people? That's all real. That's what we do. 
So when you have a, uh, a man who loves Jesus and who reads his word and acts as a priest of the home and, and doesn't shun his duties as a father, should he be a father, and he actually cherishes that wife, she blossoms, she blossoms. You know, Marie said something to me one time many years ago, and she said it with tears, and I'm talking 30 years ago, but it just came to mind as I was saying that. She came in after a church service. She had shared a little bit at a woman's function in our church, and she came walking in. She was talking to me, just kind of unloading what she had just experienced, and she said that something like this. She said, I am I am so blessed, she says, I have a husband who adores me. And I never really, you know, I, I never really thought of that term. I mean, we're talking over 30 years ago. I never really thought in terms of me adoring her because they had usually reserved the word adore for God. But she was using it in the common way, which simply means I know that you love me. I know that you do. I, I, I have asked in the past of, of wives, do you know that your husband loves you? And many don't. Many don't. The husband doesn't show them. They don't know what it means. A lot of husbands can't even speak and say, this is what I feel. There are a lot of men who are close, and there are a lot of women who have been injured in, in poor relationships and bad parenting and all. And, and it all works to, to actually bring marriage down rather than to elevate. So when you read the Word of God and, and you wash your, water, uh, your wife with the water of the Word and, and you, you love her the way Christ loved her and and you yield to the things that are best for both of you. It matters. And one last thing about that is Marie and I, a long time ago, um, I found a, a phrase that I think exemplifies us. And it's simply this, we choose us. We choose us. I am better with her and she is better with me. And we choose each other so that we together can be better people. And it's all under the under the desire to do the things that please the Lord, uh, the things that we read in Scripture and uh, put into practice. That's how it works. So that's how submission is possible. For me it is, and that's yeah, I think that's biblical, yeah. Amen. And for me too. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and it's not this impossible task for wives to submit to husbands. It really comes down to the role of the husband if he's loving and washing her in the water. The word filled with the Holy Spirit and following Jesus. Being under the control of the Spirit. Be ye not drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be kept constantly filled with the Spirit. Dissipation is a lack of self-control. Be filled with the Spirit, and you'll have the Spirit's control in your life, and then you can submit one to another. And wives, you can submit to your husband. And husbands, you can love your wives. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for that, and want to thank you guys for tuning in. And we do want to take uh, take the time to uh, for us to remember to pray for the families of of the uh, parents of and the families of those affected by the shooting in Texas. Amen. And uh, and keeping them in mind and remind that we do have our church services on Sunday morning at eight thirty and ten forty five. Men, a reminder that this Sunday is the last day to purchase your stake ticket for our upcoming uh, men's conference on June fourth. So I want to encourage you to purchase your tickets. And we thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you so much. Right, God bless you guys, and we'll see you soon.